A very good morning to all members and guests. Ramadan Kareem to you all, and especially to members who are observing the fast. Today's webinar is about business excellence, particularly the competitive advantage you derive from being an excellent company and how excellence aids in growing your business. To deliberate on this very important topic, we have two apt personalities whose professional lives revolve around the concept and practice of business excellence. Let me start with uh, Mr. George Albergaria. He exemplifies the award that he manages. George's program manager in business excellence at the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He manages the prestigious Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Business Award since 2011. That's when he came to Dubai. Yeah, this is the leading business excellence program in the Middle East that supports companies in developing business best practices and driving growth. He has played an instrumental role in the award expansion in the UAE and the wider region. Now, those of us who know George and who've been privileged to work with him since the time he started with the Dubai Chamber in 2011, we know that he is wedded to the job, to his job. And it's not surprising that he now has a family of awards. Yeah. He gave birth to two additional niche awards in addition to the Business Excellence Award itself. And these are in innovation and customer excellence. So yes, he manages three awards in all. Prior to joining the Dubai Chamber, George held several positions in leading international consulting and telecom companies. He graduated in business administration and management from Catholica, the Lisbon School of Business and Economics in 2001. He holds an executive master in finance and management control and a master in science and accounting from ISCTE Business School, University Institute of Lisbon. Uh, from what I know of George, since the time he joined the chamber, we've had a very high quality professional relationship uh, all along. And he has brought about some innovation or the other to the award and enriched it through the entire decade. So a round of applause uh, for George uh, Albergaria, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Great. We now move to Dr. Kanwadecha. Now, very few people in this region symbolize, epitomize the business excellence uh, arena as Dr. Madrecha does. He's been honored by his Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, VP and Prime Minister of uh, UAE and ruler of Dubai and other Highnesses from Dubai and Abu Dhabi several times for his notable leadership contributions to business excellence and the human development movement in the Emirates of Dubai and Abu Dhabi. He's also been awarded by several organizations for his leadership contributions to business excellence field in the UAE and for that matter, the GCC. He's the only excellence advisor in the UAE who has supported 42 large and reputed business organizations from 25 industry sectors, and that includes the healthcare sector in the UAE, to win 93 prestigious excellence awards in the UAE during the last 20 years. He's received 79 formal client appreciations. He has led the assessment of 100 plus external and internal excellence awards. When we turn to the person in Dr. Madrecha, his personal target, his aspiration, if you will, is to be the global ambassador of excellence, health, happiness, peace, and prosperity, that H2P2 as he calls it. Health, happiness, peace, and prosperity of all stakeholders, for that matter, the whole wide world of 7.3 billion people on the planet. This other personal aspiration is to develop further his yoga and meditation 
practice as an instructor for the last 23 years. And he holds public yoga classes in Dera in Dubai, free of charge. I can't personally wait to hear these two gentlemen deliberate on this topic. This is a topic that is very dear to me as I've been an assessor of the MRM Business Award myself. And uh, I'm always keen to learn more. Over to you, gentlemen, and Dr. Madhricha in particular. Thank you. Ramadan Karim, Salaam Alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramesh Malingam, for such a lovely introduction. Uh, I've been knowing you since uh, many years, including as MRM assessor or as Toastmasters, great side of uh, your story. Uh, George, are you to share your screen now? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ramesh, for your introduction, and also Dr. Kanak for uh, this opportunity. Um, it's a great privilege to to be able to to to, to talk a little bit more about the business excellence and MRM Business Award to that uh, community of professionals, and I hope that uh, these sessions can be of benefit for everyone attending. So without further ado, so I'm just going to mention you the highlights, some of the highlights of the presentation. Just give me one second, this is. <coughs> so I will make a brief introduction about the role of business excellence in advancing organizations. Also a quick introduction to the MRM Business Award and its unique business performance model framework. And then a few insights on some areas that are very close to us. One is in innovation. So why is innovation not only about new products or services, and also the customer experience? Um, why is it a key success factor for all companies, B2C, B2B, or even B2C and to b And then in the end, just a few notes on the leading in terms of uncertainty. Uh, I would like to, to start by this is just a cartoon, but uh, an evidence of something very common here and everywhere, I would say, uh, inside and outside the UAE. Um, that the measurement, the right measurement in business is not being busy, but productivity. Everyone is very busy the whole time, which is uh, good, but uh, at the end of the day, what matters is, if, is, is it if the, the individuals are actually using their time the best way and in the productive way. And uh, organizations made of individuals, of people like us. And like us human beings, we are colleagues, and so are companies. And whenever there is no direction, no control, or a system in place, what happens is some kind of a, uh, different levels, I would say, of misalignment. I'll say here, I call it misalignment strategy, where the, the, the Organizations, they move in different directions and individuals are also move in different directions, sometimes even against each other. So this is kind of a, a, a bit of a, a random chaotic scenario when there is no control. This is very much linked to our own um, nature and the complex of organizations, which is very common everywhere. Uh, but when you put some time kind of control, a system in place, let's say, or a, a line, you start drawing a line of sight so everyone can be focused on one direction, getting in shape. So all the resources, instead of going in different directions, they start moving on one direction. Nevertheless, it's still not yet the perfect situation because individuals, you can call it individual, or even can call it teams or even departments, they move in different directions. And we know that this happens in, in most of the organizations, being large, medium, or small organizations, all the organizations, because they are small, they are more, uh, easier to, to, to manage. The communication is more fluid. Um, so it makes it everyone to be more close aligned to, the, to a certain objective. In large organizations, even medium, it becomes much more difficult. The challenge is much more difficult to, to manage because of uh, uh, different departments, different objectives, uh, office politics, and uh, barriers and the people working in silos. So this is not yet the ideal situation. The ideal situation is when everyone is focused and aligned, when there is a line of sight, a line strategy. So everyone is, is facing the same direction, everyone knows what they have to do, and they put some effort on it. I'll say like a, um, 
comparison, like rowing a boat. If you are, like imagine, if we are in a boat rowing, everyone has to contribute, right? Anyone who is not rowing at the same speed or at the same pace, uh, or not rowing at all, is not contributing to the, to the, the, the group effort. So this is the same in our organizations. Okay, so if you are in a boat rowing, we, if we see someone is tired, we might help, you know, or we might grow stronger, but we will not be very happy to see someone is just sitting and just watching while the other ones are making an effort. The same happens in organizations. So ideally, as a team playing strategy, we want that everyone puts in the same effort and goes toward the same direction. The for the organizations that are having a line of sight line strategy, and this is very much as a responsibility from the top management who is responsible to find the strategy and uh, promote a good communication in the so that everyone knows what they are aiming for. So, this very much links to the role of business excellence in advancing organizations as business excellence. Some of you already know business excellence is not a, is not um, okay, a standard, it's not a policy where checklist you either have or not have. Business excellence is much more than that. Business is about it's a, it's a management philosophy. Business excellence is about a, a continuous improvement. So anything related to good business excellence, it's about continuous developing and strict, strengthening the management system or process in the organization with the ultimate objective of improving performance and for creating value for all the stakeholders, can be the can be the employees, can be the, the community, the government, everyone around the organization. So business excellence is just not uh, it's a short term game, I would say. It's a long term view. And we created this award in order to help companies to, to become strong and to grow the long term. This is a long term project. Continuous improvement is just not a uh, one-stop uh, shop. It's a journey. Company starts little by little, and then when you get to, get to, to it, the, it's like an engine. Every down the them together, and in the long run, it increases speed, and they start uh, cruising uh, in time. So, the, in terms of this excellence, it's about continuous improvement throughout the time. It's also led to the infinite. Because at the end of the day. Uh, we are the, well, there's the employees, there's business owners, there's entrepreneurs. Everyone wants to have a, a long term uh, project or a job. And the aim of, of the, this award is also to help companies to endure on time. So that, that help the community. If we all have jobs, we can uh, support our families, children, education, and everything. If we have a good and sustained company, uh, sustained uh, work that also not only gives us the, the means to, 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 to live, but also that it's a purpose. You know, when we wake up in the morning, we have a purpose, and we have a challenge, and we have achievements. Uh, so this is all under the umbrella of business excellence. Um, the thing is that is very important that it, this is nothing new for anyone. Is that if you remember very well, um, all, of, like, all of us here remember the time of the yellow pages. And if you go back 20 years in time, or more, you remember that uh, uh, there was globalization, and uh, we will take whatever the company decides to use and give us. Also, the, the products will last longer. If you remember, a uh, fridge or a washing machine, it could last for 20 or 30 years, with no problems. Nowadays, after five, six years, already the rub is coming out and it's maintenance. Um, so they last le less time. They're also much cheaper than what before. So, but I that well before, um, the business environment or business dynamics was uh, slower than it is today. There was no websites, there was no information nowadays. Um, nowadays, it's an ever changing environment. The companies will not change at the same speed, or even at the faster speed, eventually, on time, become obsolete. So, it's linked to the importance of business experience in companies. You just sit and watch, you'll be. Uh, falling behind. It's already taking the lead. And um, I have to, to, to have this in mind and have this uh, Google in their DNA. They have to keep on moving. That usually makes reference to this, what is called the Red Queen effect. Because if you, if you, uh, you have to run that low speed, you want to move faster. 
Okay, because if you run, then you will still be on the same position because everything around you moves at the same speed. So you have to run double of the speed in order to be ahead of the game. So also the important aspect of business excellence is that this philosophy and management philosophy it relies on certain values. Okay, again, if from any kind of quality standard. Business excellence uh, incorporates values of value creation, of growth, of culture, sustainability, um, focus, uh, future-oriented, customer focus, empowerment, this is very important, as productivity, smart solutions, you know, not about working hard, but about working smart. So this all comes together under the, the scope of business excellence. About values. They, they all cover different areas, uh, different realities within any organization, being a, a medium, small, or large, or multinational organization. These are core values for any organization to endure on time. In order to, 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 to make this um, happen in the business community, so that the Chamber created in 2005 the Amir Inrashi Business Award. So this award aimed at helping private companies, for profit companies, not only to improve uh, their uh, practices, business practices, in adopting leading business practices, but most of all, to improve their results, to improve their performance. So this started in 2005 with the UAE. Um, and it also not only helps it aims at helping companies, but also to recognize those companies who are already, already making great achievements in terms of performance, and they are models for other companies to follow them. Uh, and recently, we created also the speed side, the world grow grown organically. So we launched in 2014 the initial award, uh, focus only on the innovation area, so the MI Business Innovation Award. And most recently, last year, we launched the first in the region of the Customer Excellence Award. Just focus, we should focus on different areas. So why do companies participate in this kind of award? So what are, what are the benefits? I'll say that uh, the, the, the different levels of benefits, of course, there is the, the, I'll say that the most important one, the one that I most uh, push it forward, further is the, the, the ability for companies to learn, to identify where they are strong, to identify where they are not that strong and take action on, on the weaknesses. Because at the end of the day, you have the trophy is very good and you can put it on a, a great achievement, it's a recognition. But if you don't trust your staff well under or see your customers' uh, needs, if you don't uh, meet those needs, if they exceed those needs, the, the trophy will not, will not make you a uh, great help to be limited. So the main benefit is for companies to learn and how to improve. Because when they start creating their own assessment, they identify some gaps and they take action on it. Um, companies also do self-assessment. So this is the best way to start. You have to know your, your, what is going on in your company. Uh, but also assessed by a team of assessors, so which is very good uh, to have someone outside of your uh, um, environment with, no, with less biased view, who look at your company with a, with a rational and non-emotional view and a point, pinpoint what is good and what is needed to be improved. Also, companies can progress, make a progress to the feedback report prepared by the assessors, compare themselves with other players in the market and also what practices they have in place against business practices that have been used uh, widely uh, by leading companies. And of course, uh, recognition. Those are the best companies who have the highest scores get an award from Simon Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, it's a big ceremony, it's a big uh, media coverage, and of course, it's recognition also improves your credibility. And the companies will want to do business with you. Everyone likes to be associated with success stories, but not the other way. Uh, so if you are successful and if you can showcase it, you will, your, your, your brand, your soft power becomes stronger. And at the end of the day, this is all about continuous improvement that you want to outperform your competition and better more for your customers. So just in a nutshell, the, 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 um, as I mentioned, uh, the Business Excellence Award um, has to, in order to make, to, to make results, to make it happen, it's a system in place. Okay? And in the, the first class of the strategy, line strategy, uh, this one happens when there is no system in place, no control. So this, the, the Business Award created its own framework. It's a unique framework. Our framework is different from other awards. Um, 
and it's also flexible and this is too generic. It means that can be used by any size company and for any industry. It can be hospitals, can be education, can be consultancy, can be finance, can be um, construction, can be manufacturing. Everyone is welcome and to benefit and use this framework. And if you can see the framework at the beginning, the middle and the end. So as the key areas that enable, and then these are mirrored in the results. So what we want to know is that what you're doing now and the result sheet of the last few years. By having a framework, you create a system. Okay? By having a system, you make sure that things happen. There's a, there's a, there's a, a procedure. There's a, 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 people know what they have to do because it, without system, you're just waiting for things to come out of a, you know, on a random uh, way, which is not the, the best way to, to, to guarantee results on the, the medium and the long term. So while the business award covers all of the areas, the business innovation award covers only the innovation area and the customer excellence award only the customer area. Moving on to the specific initial work. So let's give here just a, a few insights. Again, this is, uh, this area has a, a lot of discussion because uh, as you know, the, the, especially in innovation, there's many views, there's many perspectives, there's many, discussion um, so the, the, the these are our own our own insights and from previous experience if i go to ask remember in, during the training workshops when i ask individual uh, each person what was their definition for innovation everyone will give a different definition innovation is this innovation is that uh, which were most of the times correct but they were not uh, probably complete and the thing that I noticed as well is that people were only, only focusing on innovation as of um, creating a new product or a new service. So if I don't create a new product and a new service, I'm not innovative. And that is not quite right. The companies are, most of the companies are very innovative, different levels, of course, of innovation. But uh, uh, once they become aware of other perspective of, of innovation, they realize that they're actually doing great things. So our effort is to break this taboo of that innovation is a new product or new service and, and make companies understand that it's much more than that. So what we've done is we use the Oslo manual definition from the OECD. So this manual is available. It's quite extensive. It goes too much into the detail of innovation and measurement of innovation. So from their perspective, innovation is the implementation of a new or significantly improved product, which can be goods or services process and or organizational marketing method to improve the organization competitive position and increase performance or knowledge. So the key words here I highlight, there's two, a few key, key, key messages in this definition. First, it's uh, not only new, but also can be significantly improved, okay? And then it's not only product, can be processes, can be also organizational or marketing methods. I'll give you some examples to make this more clear. Um, if you remember the, the Uber, this relates to because there are different, we can have innovation, what we call radical innovation, which is something new, okay. and then there's incremental innovation, which is in layers. Uh, both are innovations. Well, one is more easy than the other one. It, radical innovation is something totally uh, in existence. Um, I always call it, if you read the book from Peter Thiel, Zero to One. Um, the, the, the radical innovation happens from zero to one. So it didn't exist and now it's the first time. And all the rest of the innovation happens from one to the infinite, which are better versions of what already exists. So this is the most common one and it's all of the innovation. And a good example is Uber and Karim. If you remember, Uber was the first one. It was the first uh, ride sharing application. You still know how it was in the beginning, it has been changing over the years. So they implemented the new technology, very easy app to, to use. So with three steps, you can have a car at your doorstep. Um, they were becoming very successful uh, globally. Karim just made, if you look back, he just made, made a copy of what was Uber adapted and created his own application. And he became very successful around it. The very, the business that became very innovative. And they didn't have to create anything new. They just uh, look at what others were doing and did it their own way, on a better way, and adapted to this market. So, and this, uh, just because it did it already exist, doesn't mean they're innovative. They were very innovative. Another example as well is the 
the sales, the promotions. If you remember the Black Friday sale, was it's been on for many years in the United States. And uh, the White Friday and the sales, and then now we have Yellow Friday sales. We have uh, many colors of sales. Uh, so also this sales promotion was a repetition of what already existed, but it can also be innovative. Then we have innovation in the production, you know, the use of 3D printing to deliver your materials, your goods in a faster, in a faster way. Also robotics is applicable. You can have new products totally different from your main business, the iPhones be created and the, the iWatch. Uh, even the, the Pringles were different from the, the norm, the design elliptical fries and the box as well. We also have a uh, innovation in distribution, new distribution channels, innovation in the marketing, for example, creating uh, loyalty cards, the use of scans to speed up uh, uh, the living of the products. To use internally, if you do something in that inside your organization that creates efficiency and reduce costs, like using your analytics or data, or big data or market intelligence to get the results, the automatic way and fast way, that can be seen as well as innovation. Ticketing in the airlines objective is to is to um, transport people, but when they improve their ticketing system from the paper to the online, they reduce costs and they, they use the experience much better. Use of chatbots as well, that much easier. You can get, you, I use it a few times here in some authorities. You can go in a one minute or two, you can get the information you want. Instead of calling or sending emails that takes a lot of time, it creates some level of anxiety. So all of these small things, they add up, they make it um, actually innovative and progressively create value. As long as you prove that all the innovations are creating impact in your business, being on the bottom line, you know, reducing costs, the overheads, because reducing costs, promoting efficiency, uh, increasing revenues, increasing satisfaction, increasing the uh, rotation of products, increasing increased sales, repeated purchases, this can be seen as innovation. But there's also some challenges because sometimes innovation cannot be um, a small improvement. As I mentioned, it has to be significantly improved. So here are just a few examples. The old, the old phones, when they move to the iPhones with the soft keys, uh, the digital screen, this can be seen innovation. But nowadays, the iPhones, they are also similar to each other. They can this is significantly improved. So this is not, it cannot be seen as innovative anymore. The, uh, the AirPods, for example, the headphones, beginning, they okay, they still have the cord, the, the tangle, and all that, but when Apple, Apple moved forward with the, 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 the wireless phones, this is a significant change compared to the previous one. So there are some products on the borderline, some services, some processes in the borderline, but it all depends on the approach that we are given. If you change your update software and your innovation, of course, it's business as usual. But if it's something that is totally different from what it was before, but uh, and so it means that it's significantly improved, that can be seen as innovation. So this is just a summary of the, the four perspectives uh, of innovation from our point of view, the product innovation, the process innovation, and also organizational innovation. This is happening internally, and the marketing innovation. And it has to do with the new design, new packaging, product placement, promotion, or even pricing promotions. As long as it's something new for your business and brings good to your business can be uh, seen as innovation. Um, moving on from innovation, we still have a few minutes left. Um, I'd like to touch about uh, on an obvious and very important aspect for, for, uh, for every business. These private and for-profit business, they need the customers they need to survive. So they need to cater for, for their own interests. And we gather some interesting information from some recent reports from international companies. This is one from PwC 2008. So what people value most in their customer experience. And if you can see here on the top left, or the top right, I'm sorry. Here, so on the left axis, on the uh, axis, you have worth paying more for. On the X, Access, you have level of importance for customer experience. And interesting, you see it's all about experience. So customers, they value more and they are willing to pay more for efficiency, convenience, knowledgeable, knowledgeable service, easy payment, and friendly service. And then in the middle, we have human interaction, personalization, loyalty, program experience. 
uh, on the bottom, the last list in Portugal, is charitability, global presence, or fun. So you see, is the human interaction is the most important one. Um, and what also, what practical way? I said that, uh, so here in the metrics, you have, uh, these are all countries, a couple of countries, it was 100 plus countries, and this is the United States. Uh, and you can see what people are wearing. It's not a surprise, I'll say, but it's different when we see the personal different opinions get together. It's a bad employee attitude, unfriendly service, untrusted, and knowledgeable employees. So it's a product not available. So you see there's a big gap between all of this, uh, say, three for six, compared with the other ones. Again, it's very much linked to the experience and the human interaction. If you look at the one and the other one, you see it's a, it's very human touch by this bad employee choose and friendly service or the reputation of the company. Uh, people, of course, depending on the level of, of, of the investment, the purchase of the goods, they will be more paying more attention if it's a company will, will give them what they expect or if they will fail on that. So the trust, the reputation of business is very, very important. Also, the, the and here you can see the B2B, the B2C consumer. It has been changing over the years. So here on the top, you see the traditional business to business buyer and new business to business buyer. So now he has, from known is now anonymous. So you can check what your business is doing online without you even knowing, looking after what you're doing. And also from rational to emotional. And fickle. Before he was loyal and now he's fickle because there are so many options. And probably if the cost range is lower, you can change for one view. Even if you have contracts, as you added through the company, they have put these uh, contracts that keeps their customers uh, attached to them. And I said, like any contract can be broken. If you, the company finds something better, they can make a contract, pay the penalty is applicable and just come to another customer. So don't just business, not just rely on contracts, not anymore. And then the business to consumer also changed. So from emotional is now more rational, it gets more attention. He looks up after reviews, he does, he goes to YouTube and check a comparison between products. He goes to, he's in the shop and he goes to Amazon to see if it's cheaper online rather than bricks and mortar shop. He's, well, he was independent, he's more interdependent now. So he will interact with companies and ask for information because he wants to know more. He wants to know that uh, actually if you are delivering your promises. And while he was transactional, now he's more considered. Okay, so he puts more thought in the decision of buying. But he still continues to be fickle. Of course, now more than ever, there are so many options available. Uh, customer loyalty is very difficult to, 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 to gather. So you always have to keep on uh, delivering and uh, not only meeting, but also exceeding their expectations and making them ambassadors of your brand and loyal customers. Also here in the brief uh, uh, explanation, the change in the customer buying journey. If you see here, see, this, the green is the significantly increased amount increased and the blue significantly decreased. So if you see here, Customer expectations for more personalized experience has increased quite substantially. Also, the extent to which customers independently research products or services also has increased. Customer expectations directed to in insights. You know, they want more information before their purchase actions also increased. Uh, level of emotional investment also increased. And interesting is the average length of time from first interaction to first purchase has decreased quite a lot. So they don't want long, long, um, long uh, chats and uh, uh, interactions. They want something very fast. They want it now and they want it right and seamless experience. This is applicable if you see here to, for both B2B and B2C businesses. So this is, I keep on referring to this because I realize that many companies think that customer is only for the B2C. That is true because that is us as individually more familiar with it. But the B2B is also very important, has been changing, you know, because the new generations, the, the, the millennials or whatever the generation is, they're working in business, business to business as well. So they bring their personal behaviors into the companies. So their level, expect, their level of expectations is the same. While they do it at their personal lives, when they do it in their companies, they expect the same. They expect uh, the speed, they expect quality, and an efficiency. They, no one wants to be bothered with the returns, with going through big catalogs and finding products and finding the wrong prices and out of stock. And people will just become, uh, you know, people are more uh, impatient. They will become annoyed and they will just move along to another supply, another business. Happy customer, this is uh, something everyone uh, is familiar with, of course, uh, that the, the better the base of customers you have, the better results 
you can get. So this is um, just a, a very brief explanation, which I find it's very, very interesting. You have different levels of results, first order. If you have a strong customer base, if they're happy with your business, if they are loyal, you can have a, they can buy more. You can do cross sales, you can lower. They are less sensitive to, to prices and they can give you a positive word of mouth. This is the best marketing you can have. Then you can move on to a second level of results. The, because they are loyal, they have lower acquisition costs, lower cost to serve, higher price. They can, if they are happy with you, they are willing probably to pay more to give them also better value. You can sell more as well and have a positive reputation. At the end, this is creating, you see that the, share, the shareholder value goes up. At the end of the day, the private businesses, or they, because they want, want to get the value from their investments or the business growing. So you can have more cash flow, increase, accelerated, increased, and also lower value, uh, volatility. You know, if your base is stable, you can predict what will be your, your, uh, your revenues in, in the foreseeable future. So what can companies do? They can deliver outstanding value, a great experience, be consistent, of course, create an holistic customer journey, focus on the internal customer. This is very important inside the organization. Invest in the, in the human experience interaction. Obviously, the human experience interaction is very important. And this comes up to your employees, one facing the customer. So the front office need to be empowered, they need to be knowledgeable, and they need to be, most of all, happy in order to give, always answer the customers with a smile and foster a customer-oriented culture. So these are some of the key aspects of, of customer that we, one or two or more can apply within the organization. Finally, just a few pieces of, um, of uh, uh, these are just an opinions on these turbulent times, leading in times of uncertainty. Of course, there is no, no uh, recipe, uh, but there are some key aspects. And I would like to, to to, to leave you at least two of them. So the first one is um, start with your people. Uh, companies are made of people, okay? Not the other way around. And companies don't innovate, people innovate. So the people are your most important assets. So companies, most, most of the times, they look there, they see the people on their back and they're just looking to the customer in front of them. That is important, but like, um, staff and motivation, there's very limited progress that companies can achieve. And an aspect here I wanted to, to, to make sure to, to, to convey is the corporate culture. So companies are very good and at um, uh, forecasting inputs. Okay, they get you know, eight hours a day times the next employees. It will produce uh, Y. So this, um, this is an easier task, but companies are not so good at uh, forecasting outputs. So the thing that I want to, lay, uh, to convey is that the time and the physical presence equals results is not applicable anymore. Okay? Because you can have a lot of people coming to work doing eight hours and producing nothing. And this is not what you want. What you want is the output, a results-oriented culture. So for that, you need a culture of excellence. You need to have a, a empowered staff. You need to engage uh, your people. And you need the right people. Some people will, you have different levels of, uh, of resources of staff. Some will do what you ask them to do. Others, you need them to be uh, have foresight, have a vision, have a, a strategic mindset so they can see opportunities and tap into them. They take initiative, okay? This is the kind of stuff that you need. And you can make it, you know, you can engage them, you can empower them, trust them, and looking for the results. Instead of demanding uh, inputs, demand results. It's a totally different approach. And this, at the end of the day, the companies are what they, they deliver and not what they input it. You can say, oh, I work very hard, I'm very uh, hard working, but at the end of the day, no one cares about what you do. People just care about what you can do for them. Okay, it just is about the results. And if you can do it in a smart way, even better. So uh, important culture is uh, the one that uh, uh, staff are motivated, empowered, and take initiative. It's not a problem solving or a comfortable routine that happens many times, and it's the easiest way. These are some key aspects of culture of excellence, uh, the uh, meaningfulness and purpose, attract and retain the best people. Always keep in mind, if you attract and retain second-rate people, you always be a second-rate company. So this is very important, starting from the recruitment and re retain the ones who are good and, get, uh, and let go the ones who are not uh, aligned. Um, foster resilience, robustness, strategy, and foresight. This is very important, the foresight. So act ahead of 
time. You know, just don't be problem solving. Most of the people spend a lot of time and resources solving problems. In order to, to avoid them, you have to have foresight and plan ahead. So we'll avoid any kind of, of surprises. And very important as well is the go in, you know, the startup mindset. Go and get things done. No matter what, get results. No excuses. Excuses are, excuses are useless. Results are everything. Lastly, um, some concepts I would like the companies to start becoming aware of. We realize that some are already doing great um, internally in terms of project management, project, uh, product delivery, the, the concept of agile. Okay, so you see that the business environment changes continuously and sometimes what we see now it can change from one day to the other. Things can, can just totally take a 180 degrees turn. So companies have to be not have to be agile, cannot be any more heavy and slow motion and they take time to decide and take time to act. So these are some key aspects that I would like to, to, to convey, which is the lean uh, to avoid any kind of excess or, or waste. Lean startup, Kanban, Scrum, uh, concepts like sprint, time box, retrospectives, releases, also transparency, self-organization, rich communication exploration, interaction, constant interaction between the partners and with the customers, increment and prioritization, also the concept of minimal viable product, design thinking. So these are all uh, very up-to-date uh, concepts in business and project delivery and also business management and design thinking is for complex problem solving uh, that involves most of all a great level of interaction. So very disconnected from the past when companies develop everything from their own, many times away from the customers. And they end up after one or two years of product development, finding out that the customers don't want that product or service. So wasting, wasting a lot of time and useful resources. So this is a totally different perspective. Get closer to your customers, to your stakeholders, interact, learn. So you build, you measure and you learn and you build again. And then you're sure that you deliver what they want at the fast pace and with the limited use or waste of resources. So this ends the, the, the presentation. So the, just as a last word, I'd like to mention that the registrations for the awards are still open. They will be closing soon. Uh, if you need any more information about the awards, you can reach, uh, you can visit the Dubai Chamber website or send us an email to businessaward at dubaichamber.com. Myself or my colleagues will be more than happy to liaise with you and give you any kind of a clarification. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll pass now to, to Dr. Kanak. Thanks, George, for a very comprehensive introduction to business excellence and uh, how to build a you know, competitive advantage and accelerating growth. Uh, we have been a bit unfair because I think we have given you only 30, 35 minutes and want to describe all this. Uh, yes. time. <laughs> so, and I, have to, I have to speed up a little bit, but we have here uh, enough uh, material to talk for the... Um, I know, I know. Well, we can talk about it again in the future when things get better in a, in a, in a meeting room or in the talk again in more detail. Yeah, but uh, uh, you know, since we have a lot of elite audience here, all the IBPC members here, so I wish to just add one thing that I have seen since we, I think Mr. Ma Ramesh Mahalingam introduced you as 2011. I think 2011 was the year in which uh, for one client, uh, I consulted and uh, they were, they I think made their profit four times in five years and won the most outstanding performance award in 2012. So I'm only, uh, you know, reinforcing that while the White Chamber is running MRM Business Excellence Award, but it is not just an award, as you rightly said, it is a performance improvement model given to Dubai Chamber members, or now it is GCC wide, so all GCC applicants. So there have been many cases where companies' profitability have become a double in five years, sometimes double in three years, sometimes double in two years. I know example, even myself, double in one year. So I think uh, while you said excellence, innovation, and customer experience, so innovation and customer experience go behind delivering the excellence and with the final uh, you know, final outcome is results. And MRM Business uh, Award also have, I think, a very high result focus. You have 60% uh, marks for the results, correct? Yes, yes, correct. 60% marks. Yes, that means 
those who are result oriented organizations are likely to do better in terms of winning the award uh, i will you know ask one questions before i you know give the floor for the questions which are already coming from the audience uh, how do you say is a value of your feedback report because the mrmba uh, submission is given by the applicants then assessors make a feedback report how do you deliver value to these applicants in terms of the feedback report the, the feedback report is a very important tool for companies to to understand where they are strong and where they have to make improvements so based on their findings the assessors for each one of the areas of the framework will highlight uh, the, the the strengths and areas of improvement so the strengths usually are, are good for the companies they know already what what they are but the areas of improvement is the ones that they need to take action okay so it's very good to have this uh, in a in the brief report this kind of information and so companies can plan, uh, you know, they, create, they define what they want, create priorities and take action on those areas that they need to improve. In fact, I uh, support what you said. In fact, uh, when I was talking once to one of the CEOs, uh, he took out a feedback report and he told me the value of this feedback report is like quarter million or half a million there. I said, how? He said, 20 or 40 assessors days who are very high, you know, enlightened, qualified and experienced have gone through my submission and given me the report. That means indirectly, uh, by paying few thousand dirham, companies are delivering, or you are delivering a value to the companies uh, of the order of, uh, leave aside the profit improvement, but at least the value feedback report is like a free consultancy, which is quarter million, yes, half a million. Yes, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a very affordable award participation for such value that the companies received in the end. And I'm also aware of, uh, you know, some other awards globally, which charge the fees equal to something like 50,000 dirham. I'm aware of the awards yes. where some of the organizations here apply, even some of my clients also apply. So they pay 50,000 dirham for applying for an award. And finally, of course, you'll get an assessment and a feedback report. So from that perspective, I think uh, Dubai Chamber is doing a great job of, uh, you know, doing value addition that uh, you pay only for a few thousands and you are eligible to apply for three awards now, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Part. Companies can, uh, yes. The business excellence, the innovation, or the customer. So the main award and or the two niche awards. Companies can apply to one, the two, or the three at the same time. We actually recommend the companies who apply for the business award to also apply to the two niche awards because the criteria between the three is the same. So they but can if, go in three fronts. But if some organizations are not so strong in, let's say, in all the criteria are not in the results, but they're only strong in, let's say, innovation or let's say only in customer experience. Can they apply only for one award? Yes, yes, they can. They can. They can start, they can. especially even if it's there. Yes, they can. They can apply only for the, niche, uh, the innovation award, for example, or the customer. We launched another customer. If a company wants even to start their journey of excellence, they can start with one niche award to see how it works, how this kind of models operate. They start with that one and then uh, the, the, their journey starts there. And uh, in terms of timelines, I think you have a very tight timeline now. Uh, when is the registration and when is the submission? Yes, so the registrations are running until the end of this month, right? I think we might even give a few days more. And the submission is in the end of June. So companies have one month to prepare the application document, which we find it is feasible for the niche awards. For the business award, it's more challenging, but the experienced companies can do it. So my recommendation is to go for the niche awards now. Okay, and uh, in the current situation, of course, June is still far away, one and a half months. Uh, normally, I know that you do assessment, which is uh, site visits, which are um, yes, like yes, a half day, yes. by two assessors, three assessors. So, yes, so the, how the, do you in terms of, of this will happen? in the so current the situation, how do you? So the desk assessment will happen throughout the summer and the start visit assessment for those companies who are eligible, uh, it's planned to happen between the middle of October and November. Okay, so oh, by okay. then is uh, when we plan. So we okay. still have, uh, hopefully by then things will be better and the assessors can visit the, the company's offices. Great. And uh, I have attended uh, most of your MRM business award ceremonies. Uh, to give an idea of uh, uh, to our audience sitting here, uh, typically, what is the audience uh, number of people attending the award ceremony? 
the award ceremony for the Amaran Business Award is a big event here in, the, in Dubai, in the UAE. So last one was at Dubai Opera and we had 1,800 people attending. Um, so you have the, 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 not only the, 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 the top uh, local CEOs and businessmen, also the winners, of course, and the audience. So it's a high level uh, uh, profile event and which has also a very big uh, media coverage for the, the winning speech especially. And uh, so the next award uh, ceremony, the next, so for this current cycle of the award, the ceremony is planned to be early 2021. Okay. Okay, it can be February or March. We'll see depending on the evolution of the situation, but uh, by then I think already it will be fine. So this is when it will be the, the award ceremony. And in every cycle, I think His Highness has been coming to give the award. Yes, yes. Every cycle always comes, uh, or comes uh, Sheikh uh, Hamdan, or comes Sheikh Mohammed, or comes uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmed uh, Al Maktoum. So always one of the sheikhs, or sometimes even more than one. We had once or three of the highnesses coming to the. I think it was not, if not the sixth cycle, the seventh cycle. We had three coming together. So yes, there's always one of the highnesses, uh, the ruling family of the U of Dubai, to to come to to uh, deliver the awards to all the winners. And typically every year, uh, there are how many award winners? Um, so the number of winners depends. A good thing is that uh, we, don't, we want to give awards, of course, but we don't have a minimum number of awards. We don't have a quota. So the better the companies, the better scores they have, the more awards we we'll give. The last uh, cycle, we had uh, 31 winners, okay? 18 for excellence and, uh, and I think um, 18 for excellence and 13 for innovation. So 31 last cycle, I think the cycle before was maybe 20 or 30 as well. So uh, this cycle, we expect to give the same number of awards, more or less, it depends on the, 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 the companies. And the award is also now GCC wide. Yes, yes, yes. So in 2014, the, the award expanded from the UAE to the other GCC countries. So any company from the UAE or, or the GCC, the operation, well, with your headquarters here can apply. So it's, a, it's an international award. So we have companies from Bahrain, from Saudi participating all together. So indirectly, you're providing an opportunity for a UAE company to apply or any a company from uh, any yes. of the other countries to apply and win a GCC yes, award. Yes, yes, yes. As long as a, a private and for-profit company with activity in any of the uh, GCC countries, they can apply. Okay, as long as it's, even if your operation is in India or in Africa or other Middle East countries, as long as it's being managed and lead from here and in GCC countries, they can operate and they can apply, including free zones as well. Okay, so that means uh, other than government, everybody can apply. Yes, exactly. Other than every government, everybody can apply. So yes, I think everybody can uh, apply. Uh, limit, there are some limitations. Holding companies cannot apply and groups, they cannot apply. What they can apply is the individual companies within a group, they can apply. Okay, and if uh, some organization apply, let's say 2020, and uh, they are not successful, can they apply in 2021 again? Yes, yes, yes. In our award, the, the winners and non-winners, they can apply continuously. Okay, okay, okay great. Uh, I think there are some questions coming from the audience, so I will... Uh, just read one question. Uh, sure. This question is from uh, uh, Mr. Dilip Hena, who is also the IVPC Coordinator General. Uh, what role of employee skills development, cultural diversity, gender diversity, and behaviors in organization development? What is the role of uh, employee skills development, cultural diversity, gender, gender diversity, and behaviors in the organization development? Well, that is very important. And, and I'm a firm believer that the diversity brings value to the company. You know, the different ideas, different mindsets, different approaches. Um, so that is important. I would say looking at our framework in not only the workforce and talent management, but also on the governance side. Okay, a good governance practice is to have diversity, different genders, different uh, origins, even different levels of education from different fields. So that is a very important uh, aspect and a very, uh, um, very praised, all that diversity. Okay, while uh, I'm you know, asking the question, I'm also giving an opportunity to some other people who have uh, uh, put the questions in the chat or if anybody else has not put the question on chat, please put the question on the chat. You have last five minutes, put the question on the chat and uh, we will take up those questions.
please there is a q and a written at the bottom question and answer q and a at the bottom you can type the question in at the chat box and we will take the question before we lose george because i think he is uh, very busy then i think maybe 1205 will close yes meanwhile i will continue uh, if some organization is not profitable at all for the time being okay let's say uh, 2019 was not profitable but 2018 was profitable 2017 was profitable how does it impact uh, their chances of winning the war that's a that's a very good question so in terms of results we're lo only looking to the last 3 years 2017 18 and 19 so it all comes down to justifying why those results were not good in 2019 okay because there are reasons can be macroeconomic reasons that are not under control of the company and there are reasons that can be lead to, to mismanagement or even um, if the assessor realizes mismanagement is one thing but if the companies for example they are doing a, a investment which uh, in in building capacity in growing their business this will have impact on their financial results but this will be very good so the assess even if the results are not good the assessors will give a good mark because is it's based on the investment growing capacity okay so it all depends on how the companies uh, explain those results so when they'll apply for uh, cycle 2020 you will take the uh, last 3 years which means 2017 18 and 19 results 19 yes yes right. yes if the, so. if the company has a different financial year let's say march to april we can go until uh, now 2020 we need to have a, a full sets of years 12 months to, to enable okay. to, in order to be able to uh, measure the trends okay i will just take few more uh, questions from the audience uh, there is a question Uh, from mr darshan shah is there a minimum size of company that can apply uh that's a good question for example for the mrm business award the the big award i will recommend that it should be at least a minimum company a, a medium company okay at least 50 people but for the niche awards the the small ones you can it can be a small businesses we even had winners in the past innovation that was a architect uh, architect uh, company they are like uh, 20 people so okay. um for the niche awards uh, you can even if you're a small business you can apply for the business award the big one i recommend that is at least 50 people okay so you're saying uh, for the main award 50 people mrm business excellence award and the uh, other two uh, secondary awards you uh, know even up to 10 is okay yes 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 it's okay okay Okay, I will just take few more questions. I think we have time up to. Sure. You know, we gave time up to twelve. Can we go on up to twelve zero five? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Any time, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm, okay, I'm just taking the questions. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, take your time. No, no problem. I have time. Uh, uh, okay, I think one question is uh, answered by you, but I still want to raise. Uh, uh, one uh, gentleman has said, "My company has only five employees in retail sales. Can we apply?" uh well depend on which award they want to apply uh, but what if it's not clear for them they can reach out to us and then they explain we need to know what is the company about and what they do and then we'll advise them accordingly because if it's not yeah. for them we will not uh, you know uh, ask them to to pay or if it's not of their benefit yeah of course uh, i can see this uh, i'm just uh, you know in this case avoiding the name because i don't want to give the identity of the person who is asking specifically about the about the company so it's a five employees in retail sales okay i'll move to the next question uh, this is a good question in the current context why not have virtual award ceremony with digital certificates this year the ceremony is still far away and as long as we progress we will see what we will do because thinking now of a ceremony that will happen to be virtual or not virtual is still um, too early we still now in the phase of getting companies in uh, so what i was mentioning uh, uh, we are still in the early phase of the program getting companies on board and uh, when the time comes closer to the award ceremony date we will see what we will do it's still too early to think about the virtual ceremony or virtual certificates um hopefully by then things will be different from now and if the time comes if we are not able to, to conduct a normal ceremony we will see of other options including virtual but for the time being i cannot give you any feedback on this i think uh, one uh, is not a question uh, but it's a good comment which i want to read out 
this is Mr. Ramesh Mahalingam. He's saying one benefit of applying for the award, as I have noticed over the years, is that the team of the applicant company comes together in a manner like never before. They start pulling together towards a common goal and prevention gains in the bargain. Thus, the MRA award application acts as a cementing. That's very true, and that's very good benefit of participation. And we got the feedback from uh, uh, companies, general managers, so the top management, that uh, irrespective of the final result, winners or not winners, um, they were very happy because the preparation of the document brought together different teams to work together, and uh, they started realizing what the other ones are doing, and they were coming together to a common goal. Okay, so it created a better relation and kind of breaking the silos between departments. So yes, that's a very good, a very good observation from Mr. Ramesh. And so thank you. Benefit. It's, a, it's a team, it's kind of a team building opportunity. Yes, very much. And, and you know that sometimes uh, the solutions, many times solutions for challenges that the companies face are inside the company. But the, 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 the management sometimes does it because the, the interaction is limited for many reasons. They don't ask other staff to, to interact because sometimes the, 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 it will get besides and a lot of people have great ideas. Yes, yes. So I was just saying that the, the, this, is a, this is a very good benefit because it brings everyone together and you will hear different perspectives, different opinions from different uh, people and departments. And this can create a great uh, value for the company. Dr. Madrecha, with your permission, if I may just jump in for another question, maybe. Uh, George, uh, could you please talk a little bit about the assessment side, the assessors, the jury, the international composition of the jury and so forth? Please. So the assessment is a very important uh, phase of the program, of course. So the assessment is divided into phases, the desk and the self. And so the, the, in our program, we, we work different, differently from other one, other award schemes. Our teams are made of two assessors. And over the last cycles, over the last years, we have a combination of local assessors and international assessors coming from uh, Singapore, coming from India, and coming from uh, the UK as well. So they were working in together with the local assessors because local assessors are not the local reality. But they were bringing great value from the different business environment. So this will kind of make it even more, uh, you know, the, uh, more due diligence and more um, fresh and biased uh, assessment from the companies. Um, especially the Singaporean ones, they are in the, uh, Singapore is very mature dynamic business environment. And uh, they were very happy to see how some companies in the UAE are also doing great uh, things, having a great performance at the level of other multinational companies. So like I mentioned be in the beginning, uh, before in the, the as I believe that diversity brings value inside the companies. Also, I believe that the diversity in the teams of assessors bring value. So our assessors are all experienced professionals in management positions and working uh, um, for other organizations, okay? From a, uh, construction, from all kinds of industries. So they come and assess the companies. Uh, not to the same companies. If the assessors are from the finance sector, they don't assess the finance bank uh, companies because of uh, confidential information. And also because what we are looking for is unbiased, an unbiased assessment. We want the assessors to be focused only on the practices. We are not here to go and tell the business the companies how to run their business. We're just here to help them improve what they're currently doing. We finished all the questions. So in the interest of time, uh, I would like to, on behalf of uh, IBPC, uh, I would like to thank the Dubai Chamber and uh, you as a part of the MRM Business uh, Award to share your valuable time on Saturday. I think uh, we have really made you <laughs> work hard in the weekend on Saturday morning, 11 to 12. Uh, and I hope that this uh, session will inspire many uh, member attendees uh, to consider this as one of the program to run a continuous improvement program or excellence program or innovation program or uh, or uh, excellence program inside their organizations or launch the organization launch in their organizations and be winner of these prestigious award. With this, once again, I wish. Uh, uh, you thank you very much best. for this support. Uh, thank you very much for this highly, opportunity. Uh, so again, thank you very much for this opportunity. I hope it has been of value for everyone attending.
it has been a pleasure to, to it's a good way of spending the morning on the weekend to, to, to exchange some knowledge with the communities and when i hope that this everyone benefited from this exchange of ideas and uh, we look forward to have the companies uh, participating in this cycle okay thank, thank you, you dr kanak thank you ramesh thank you. for your, you this so opportunity much. and also i thank, thank uh, you i wish to i wish to thank uh, all our uh, members who are attending today who has taken their time early morning saturday morning to attend this uh, webinar on business excellence so thank you so much once again and inshallah wish you all the best stay thank indoor you. and safe oh. thank you thanks thank you thank you thank Goodbye. you Take care. Thank, thank you, you. thank you doctor thank, thank you, you.